Barbarian, this movie should have definitely been called Baby. Babies that don't know when to leave. Save yourself, SOS, get the hell out of there. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss Barbarian. Now this is a brand new horror film and it stars Georgina Campbell and Bill Skarsgård. Now before we get into all things the old bait and switch, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm going to give you guys a moment to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss I really thought we had something here. When I tell you I was intrigued and all engaged, waiting for something to happen, that was not going to happen because this was not that movie. It wasn't. Go back, 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 back. You guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but first let's discuss what this movie is actually about a woman staying in an airbnb discovers that the house she has rented is not what it seems very very simple now what i really really enjoyed right off the back about this movie especially in the beginning was the build up in the atmosphere there's already this certain disdain for some people with airbnbs in the first place how clean is it really who was here before me i really don't know the owner that well at all is it some nice genuine kind person or could it be a perv that has secret cameras in the bathroom there's already that narrative surrounding it so to put two people two strangers in that element there's already some pressure and some build up not only are they strangers but with the movie gearing towards our female lead right off the bat you feel really sorry for her like she's in a vulnerable space like this male probably has the upper hand and he is just waiting for an opportunity to attack her. I also really enjoyed the basic yet believable character development that we get from our two leads in the beginning of the film. Georgina Campbell here as Tez is really defensive not at all trusting she's extremely guarded she moves really cautious and with intent all this forethought it really makes you root for her as a character because you feel like in your mind especially as a female that she is taking all the right precautions just that she could possibly take in this sort of situation i don't know you keith i don't want the drink that you're offering me i'm actually going to keep looking for a way out looking for somewhere else to go i don't want to stay here i'm locking doors i'm taking a picture of your id just because this Airbnb is double booked and you're giving off this kind, nice guy persona doesn't mean that I have to let my guard down and automatically trust you. I was rooting for Tess. Now we also have Bill Skarsgård here as Keith and in my opinion, even though his performance is really subtle here in comparison to something like, you know, the It franchise, it is very, very phenomenal. I love his delivery as an actor and many of his films now. He just gives so much energy and you feel everything that he's doing. It's like he uses his entire body to act and he's not just solely resting on the script. He appears here as generous, compromising, a gentleman, they have so much in common. And even though she is slowly letting her guard down and even starting to like Keith, her as well as the audience, we are still not completely trusting just yet. Is this all a ploy just to entrap her? Are the hotels in the area really closed? Is there a convention? Did you spike my drink? Why do you keep offering me one? Is this just some big coincidence to get us together and you just happen to be the most sensitive, sweet, generous, nice guy I've ever met? Or is this just you toying with me waiting for an opportunity? Because from that trailer, I thought that Bill Skarsgård was definitely our psycho barbarian. 
Now the writing for this film, especially the first half, was really well executed to me. Not only the first half, but maybe the last act of the movie, like the very, very last, maybe 10 minutes of the film, was pretty well written to me. I like that we didn't know what was coming next early on, and it really made the film unpredictable, and I don't feel like we get that enough. Really strong, intense moments built into the tiniest of situations, like the random toothbrush that's on the floor, like him having a really intense nightmare, like the door or unlocking this being a really intense situation we don't know if she's gonna make it out alive but we have her wake up the next morning able to not only go to the interview but get the job and come back what is actually happening here why are these doors opening and closing on their own is this all set up and rigged by Keith? Is he working with someone? Is this some big elaborate trap just to give Tess some false sense of security? Just for her to lead and entrap herself in this never ending basement to her very own torture, led by someone that she thought was a friend. Not only do we find that not to be true, but we also find out that Bill Skarsgård, Keith's life is just as endangered as hers. That was surprising. And the final thing that I really enjoyed about the movie was that question that it leaves up in the air of who is actually the sick barbaric person here. Is it our nonchalant, unbothered, ignorant, downright uh, ass police force that seems to circle around the neighborhood and not do a damn thing? Or is it our new character, AJ, who when push came to shove, resulted to the most primal of barbaric instinct for self-survival by sacrificing our lead character. Oh, uh, it was some sick people in this movie. Now, even though I was loving and enjoying all of those aspects of this film, there were totally some things that I did not love so much, like when we left this film and went somewhere else. The introduction of Justin Long's character as the actor who's gone astray, he's assaulted a co-star, he's losing everything, and he just happens to be the owner of Seth Airbnb, and he just comes along and it's just solely about him for a good portion of the movie. When we had already spent pretty much an hour getting to know these first two people, and we just left, when I tell you I was like dumbfounded, I literally picked up my remote because I didn't know if I hit the wrong button or not. It kind of turned into a different movie. And I know that this was because we met him well into the middle of the film. We didn't know anything about him. And it was really to kind of build him up and our interest in him being the asshole that he was because through the conversations that he had, despite everything that he had to say in defense of himself, he did assault this woman and he deserved every single thing that was coming to him. I sort of appreciate it because it was a left turn that I did not expect but I also felt a little cheated because I did really come to this film and gravitate just for Bill Skarsgård and they kind of cheated us did the old you know switch and bait to where not only is he dead but now we are focusing on an entirely new character I was with it it was flowing but I also felt like we derailed the entire movie and it also got a little predictable and a little boring like I, I felt like we were wasting time especially when we were devoting so much time to to maybe trying to make it appear that he was wrong, he's innocent, he didn't actually assault the woman, but then we slowly take those things away by showing, you know, certain traits like him not being concerned with this bloody barbaric ass room that's in his basement. He's more concerned with the square feet and what he can do to capitalize and sell it and get more money. We pretty much knew where his character was going. I really think it would have served the script a whole lot better if we kept his true intent and who he really was more of a secret instead of having moments in the club with him saying things like, you know, I could be forceful, you know, oh, she needed a little help, really incenting to the type of man that he is. When instead we could have got, you know, we really don't know the type of man that he is he could be absolutely innocent there could have been you know more incentive and pressure in our mind for her to be genuinely trying to pursue going back to rescue him and then you know that unveiling of the ending where he sacrifices her it would have been felt you know even even more but you know i'm not a writer Speaking of me not being a writer, why did we build up our lead so brilliantly to be cautious, to, you know, be forward thinking, protecting herself, just to snatch it all down to have her entrap herself in this freaking basement? Like, we have her take heed of everything in the beginning, you know, she's just overly cautious and just not trusting. But as soon as, you know, that veil is dropped and she feels like our Keith character is a nice guy, it seems like all of her intuition, her thought, all of her sense went out of the window. 
And that smart girl that we met in the beginning of the film seems to go out of her way to put her life in danger. We already have all these different stop, don't go, get the hell out of there. We have this horrible, deserted, vacant ass neighborhood. We have the police. We have the homeless people, you know, saying don't go in the house. We have her later rescued by a homeless person at which she presumes to go in the house again. You have her meet up, you know, the interview with the boss when someone says, you know, you shouldn't be in that neighborhood. It's not safe. Like, it's just so many moments. Even when we have Keith, the person that she just met, even though she likes him, seemingly unfazed about, you know, how she feels about the basement. Are you sure? I need to go take a look at it. It's just almost her voluntarily sacrificing herself when I feel like the person that we met would not do that. And I do also feel like, you know, her not only going back for the Keith character, but later the AJ character was really to show, you know, that she wasn't barbaric. She was really, you know, humane. She cared about people. Like she just couldn't leave anybody behind. But there's a fine line between that and stupidity and going down, Keith, Keith. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I really wish through the writing, we could have figured out a better way to get her down into that basement or get her to go back because that just was not it she was really really getting on my nerves and I was yelling at the screen even though we love a good horror movie where we can yell at the screen I wish it was for something else and it wasn't for a character that I like just being stupid in my opinion and lastly the whole side plot with the man who previously owned the house in the 80s the murderer the assaulter the man downstairs what the hell was that and what portions are missing from this movie. There is definitely a lot missing here. First, with the movie being named Barbarian and that anticipation for what exactly was in the basement, how far did it go, who all was down there, I expect to see some freaking barbarians. Not one, not two, not a mother, like, I was like, where the hell are the people? I just knew that we were gonna go way off into the wrong turn scenario and we were gonna be just circled by all these different barbarians in the dark attacking just all these inbreeded ass people. None of that. I was like, where, where is everybody? Why have all this setup of him pretty much being a serial killer since the 80s, never leaving this home, you know, building this tunnel so he can remain there, all this assaulting of the women, all this supposed, you know, inbreeding to not actually show us any of it. It was like literally empty down there. It was really, really completely underwhelming. Of course, we have these little peekaboo images of what looks to be, you know, the barbaric figures. We have the mom and it looks like we have a son or whatever. Nothing at all was explained. We have them there and we have the actual killer, the dad who is really elderly now. He's immobile and he, you know, offs himself in the end but none of it was piecing together. They did not explain anything. I just knew when we had the um, the person from the job interview say, you know, you shouldn't be in that neighborhood. Don't you know? I thought that we were gonna go off into all of this backstory, tie things together, explain, you know, exactly what he was doing, why he decided to go the tunnel route. Like, make things add up. We did not do that at all. We just simply decided to take a trip to the 80s when the neighborhood was thriving, have him pretty much be a stalker. We have him buy, you know, child birthing videos. And it's like, you know, maybe one of the women that he maybe kidnapped was having a child. Like nothing was explained. And of course we have that childbirth video, that theme running through the entire movie at which the daughter, the mom, whatever, wants uh, the kidnapped people to be her baby. Like it, it was just, it was really terrible. And I couldn't believe that the movie took such a hard turn like you have to give us more than him showing us how he's able to trap these women you know pretending that he's an electrician or a plumber or whatever going in unlocking a door at which I'm sure that he kidnaps these women and has his way with them and clearly has had his way for you know many years with all of the tapes that he had but no real effort to connect one dot we just know that the mother comes out at night and I'm guessing she's been the one trailing through since the dad is no longer mobile and she is maybe taking care of him like if you have to sit and add things together to figure out what's going on it's 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 a complete waste of time the only thing that i liked about that whole scenario was the audacity of the aj justin long character. So like oh my god man what's wrong with you how could you do these things when you know that he is just as barbaric and he proves it at the very end of the film but we leave the film with more questions than answers, like who did the toothbrush belong to on the floor? What was the significance of that? Uh, what, you know, was up with her ignoring the phone call to the Marcus earlier? Who was that? Like, 
what, what did that did that have you know any significance to anything uh what was going on with the airbnb as a whole was this something that they were doing were they waiting for you know different renters to come through and kidnapping were they feeding like what what, what was happening were they continuing the inbreed like where, what what was going on like i needed more answers but maybe this is just you know the type of vibe that the film wanted to give off personally i wanted something more but overall, it wasn't anything too major to just make me completely turn away from the film. I would actually watch it again. And I did find certain parts really, really entertaining. And there were other parts where I was just like, what, why? You're messing up. <laughs> but I did for the most part enjoy the movie and I would watch it again. And I would recommend that you watch it and get your own take from it. Well, you guys, that was my review for Barbarian. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me what you thought about my review and what you think about this film. Did you enjoy it in the same sense that I did? Or did you just enjoy it as a whole and you, you didn't find, you know, one problematic thing with it? I look forward to reading you guys' comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, like me. <laughs> I see you guys next time. Bye.